So indeed, where do you start? Where do you start to talk about lupus? If it affects one million five people, you've got one million five different stories. It's an insidious, ugly, dreadful disease that took with it, over the years, my oldest daughter. And I can tell you exactly where lupus started with me. I'm gonna sound like Sophia on the Golden Girls. Picture this, <laughs> Hawaii Kai, 1970. There we lived in the sun and the sunshine, and my two darling daughters who were happier wet than dry. We had a pool, we had a lagoon, we had the ocean, we had sun, and they loved being wet. And they were always out in the sun, and then one day, my beautiful 14-year-old daughter said, I don't feel good. And before the sun set that day, she was in a coma at Queen's Hospital because her kidneys just quit for no apparent reason. In 1970, who knew from lupus? Nobody. It was diagnosed over a period of 12 days as acute glomerular nephritis. They said, if she recovers, probably no recurrence. And just as they were about to start manual dialysis, for some reason, her kidneys started manufacturing urine. So that was a good thing, and life had been very good up to that time. I was singing in a club in Honolulu, getting $1,000 a week, which, believe me, would be nice today. They don't pay musicians like that anymore. Karaoke and the Beatles took care of our careers. But anyway, be that as it may, she had to be on bed rest for a year, so we came back. And by the way, I'm not from Roseburg, I'm from Grants Pass, which is certainly... <laughs> Oh, it's the climate. Yes, it's the climate. And you performed there in the Rogue Theater, as a matter of fact. And I once saw a long, lean guy down there, about 2001. He was skinny. He had a wrinkled shirt and a guitar and more charisma than I've ever seen in one place in my life. His name is Blake Shelton. He turned out all right. <laughs> anyway, Candy went to Grants Pass to live with her grandparents because she was a straight-A student and I knew that she wouldn't have to miss her schooling. So she was homeschooled and my other daughter and I went to Los Angeles and started building a nest and we thought everything was gonna be fine. And then, one day, five years later, she was suddenly had a fever of 105. She was in Tarzana Medical Center, packed in ice. Interestingly, at the same time, they had college registration. And in those days, you were only allowed to have your children on your insurance until they were 19 or registered in college. Needless to say, she didn't make college registration because she couldn't get out of bed. And Prudential, that's a piece of the rock right in there on my back, folks said, she's out of here, no insurance for her. So then we had to face lupus with all of its wonderful pleasures and no insurance too, which was certainly hazardous to all of our health. And I don't know how many of you in here have been touched by lupus, but when there's a catastrophic illness in your house, everybody is touched by it. My younger daughter to this day resents the fact that Candy got all my attention. Damn straight she did. She was in the hospital. After 300 times, I quit counting. She became a teaching tool, first at UCLA, and then Cedar sinai with Dr. Dan Wallace. She certainly had the best doctors that were around. She was in another coma for 12 days. She had heart attacks. She had the lining removed from her heart. She was in UCLA for six months, sitting up trying to breathe before they did that operation. These are just some of the highlights, the fun stuff that goes on. And I've always been smart alecky, and usually when I do shows I'm funny, there is nothing funny about lupus. I don't know how to make this funny, except to tell you that one of her last comas, when I got to the emergency room at Cedars, a young doctor said to me, does anybody else in the family have lupus? I said, her father's third wife died of it, we blame him. Now, <laughs> one doctor laughed, and one doctor looked at me like I should be put in a home someplace. <laughs> That's sort of how we survived. She, too, had a killer sense of humor and a very strong will to live. They told me she wouldn't make it past 25. Well, folks, she kept going until three weeks before her 49th birthday. But that was constant uphill battles.
constant awful things, steel rods in her legs, steel plates in her ankles, hair falling out. You know, girls like to be pretty. Lupus tends to not make you pretty. If it can make you swell up and your hair fall out, it's very happy. And it just affects people in a million, million different ways. And certainly things are much better than they were in 1970, but still not enough people know about lupus. And when you try to explain it to somebody, their eyes just glaze over because they can't, cannot absorb all of the things that can go wrong with somebody with lupus. And they would always say, she looks fine. Well, yeah, she did look fine when she was able to walk. And it was just a very long, hard battle. She had tremendous will to live, which is certainly very important to anybody with that kind of an illness. And I don't want to bore you with her, her perfection because she wasn't totally perfect. She did get arrested for forging pain prescriptions. The Cedar sinai doctor said, she's not a criminal, she's just tired of being in pain. And I cannot imagine that. Pain 24 seven, year in and year out. So they put her in rehab at Cedar sinai and there she was with Faye Dunaway and Grant Richard and Paul Williams and Anthony Hopkins, who she just called Tony. So <laughs> it did sort of have an upside. And then they did a blood wash on her, which is running your blood through a centrifuge and cleaning out, hoping to get rid of the lupus antibodies by zapping you with chemotherapy. That went on for about six months. And Dr. Wallace said, I think this worked. I think she's going in remission. And Dr. Fishman said, I think this worked. And he went to Wimbledon, and Dr. Wallace went to Australia. And Candy came home and went to bed and woke up the next day blind, totally blind. And her doctors were now not even on the same continent. So back to Cedars we went and found two perfectly lovely ophthalmologists. And it's the only time I ever knew my daughter to lose her composure completely. She cussed, she yelled, she threw things. She said, I am not going to be blind. And that's not exactly how she expressed it, but that was the idea. Anyway, they did say they could fix it. She had some latent cataracts behind her eyes that for whatever reason just decided to swell up and engulf her eyes. And they had to be taken off and they put in new lenses. And eventually she could see bears on the sides of mountains. So. That was a long, hard time, but when the doctors did tell her that they could fix it, and they dilated her eyes, and they put great big black glasses on her, and when I got her down to the car, I said, how do you feel now? And she said, I feel like I should be singing, Georgia, Georgia. And that's pretty much how she lived her life, how we lived her life. It was a 34-year uphill battle. So believe me, I. Everybody dig in your blue jeans every day for lupus as far as I'm concerned because it's a horrible, horrible disease and they need all the help and research they can possibly get. And I will leave you with a Paul Williams song which is tied to lupus in my life because Candy had asked me to record this song for her so she could listen to it when I had to be at work and couldn't be in the hospital with her. So. This is hard for me to sing, but for Candy, I'm going to do it. You and me against the world. Sometimes it feels like you and me against the world. And when the others turn their backs and walk away, you can count. The circus came to town And you were frightened by a clown Wasn't it nice to be around Someone that you knew Someone who was big and strong And looking out for you And me against the world 
So long will see us through Just think about the days of me and you You and me against the world Fly with the angels, can you?